So, great news. We've been trapped. Control-Alt-Ego is one of the best games I've played in years. A title that's been slept on and should have been in contention for the 2022 Game of the Year. A title made by just a couple devs from a studio called Mindthunk. It takes a more puzzle-based approach to the immersive sim. I know immersive sim is a nebulous term, but it'll be right up your alley if you're into games like the Deus Ex series or games from Looking Glass or Arcane. The best comparison would be with Prey. The key comparison is just how much you could think outside the box to solve puzzles with no right solution like you could with Prey. The levels are designed in a way where you could take any approach you wish. It contains an engaging tale that stays out of your way, leading you to piece things together with the right level of British sci-fi quirk with dark undertones of human consciousness. Oh, but I used to call it the engineering department. <laughs> now we used to laugh. Those were the days. Immersive sims have long shelf lives, so I hope Control All Ego gets the props it deserves. There are a number of games in the immersive sim vein hopefully coming out soon. You know how long these games could take, especially with small teams. But they will have their work cut out for them. Control All Ego sits a high bar with its sheer amount of fun and creativity. In Control Alt Ego, we play as a disembodied ego. In order to progress, we transmit our ego from device to device. Some devices will be stationary, like iPads which contain notes or various odds and ends. Some will have more abilities, like a camera or one of the numerous robots we could take over. It's with the robots that the game offers its most interesting features and interacting systems. One of the robots is the bug, one which you could print at various stations throughout the levels. We can upgrade our bug to gain more abilities, or programs as they're called here. However, our bug will attract the attention of those hostile to us. This includes hostile cameras and robots not under our control. Another robot is the pup a small robot dog that could get through tight spaces and won't attract as much from those hostile to us. Another is the Dad, a stationary robot who could deserialize nearly everything in the environment and can print them back in. Another is the Mum, a robot focused on combat. What happens when you quote unquote die? After all, you're a disembodied ego. If your object you're controlling gets trashed, you just transmit your ego to something else. It might be something nearby or something far away. When your bug gets trashed, you just need to go to a printer to make a new one. It's a wonderful way of avoiding the F5, F9, quick save, quick load scumming that's so easy to fall into with these kind of games. The ones where you try to craft that perfect run instead of rolling with the punches when things go wrong. And some of my more memorable moments in Control of Ego occurred when things didn't go the way I planned and had to roll the punches. What Bob Ross would call a happy accident. The ego and juice system determines what we can and can't do at the moment. Starting with ego, which we can collect through our journeys. From reading terminals, transmitting to certain objects, destroying other objects, and one of our programs allows us to steal ego from enemies. We could use ego in exchange for controlling other objects, like locked doors, hostile security cameras, locked containers, and other robots. You can't just take over a dad robot, you need to spend your ego in order to do so. Which, depending on how you play, can be a decent chunk of your ego, or you may not have enough. The other resource to keep in mind is Juice. Juice is what allows us to use the abilities of the robots we control. For the bug, Juice is how we make use of our abilities. So for our main bug, you can have a number of abilities or programs to choose from. You don't have any at first, but finding a disc will allow you to unlock any program you wish. You could gain Juice by finding Juice packs in the environment, along with buying Juice in exchange for Ego at vending machines. One program allows you to vacuum up destroyed bits for Juice. Program I recommend you getting early in the game. It's nice that the game recommends which programs are better for beginners, which ones are for stealth, and which ones are more for advanced players. You could go for something simple like having a gun if you want the direct approach. Or take the thruster for quick vertical or horizontal movement. But it's the more advanced programs where you could get more creative. What I love to use for most of the game was the fault program. This allows you to turn a number of objects into bombs which you could chuck at enemies. Or for even more damage, use the fault upgrade on the explosive canisters lying around. Because of course they would be lying around in a game like this. Yeah. 
Hell, if you have enough juice, you could use fault on an active enemy. Sure, I could just shoot the robots, but here we could do a lot more destruction than think outside the box. A number of unexpected outcomes. Once again, happy accidents. Tread lightly with the fault ability. The major explosion at the beginning of the video was the result of fault spreading amongst a number of large canisters. This station? If so, great news! We've been trapped. Another program I love to use was the download program. It allows you to bring in a number of objects at will depending on what you unlock and how much juice you have, from containers to other kinds of robots. You could upgrade your programs with worms that we find throughout the game. One thing that Control Alt Eagle does really well is distinctive audio cues. Worms can be pretty tricky to find and blend in with the environment, but you know one is nearby if you hear the slurping sounds. Along with distinct sound cues, taking control of certain objects will have distinct music tracks. That was really refreshing, wasn't it? I hope this makes you twice as productive so that we can meet our monthly quota. This being an immersive sim, there are plenty of vents we could use. Lots of rooftop vents. But it's not like the IDOS Montreal Deus Ex games where so many are hidden behind heavy objects. Although Control Alt Ego does have a few of those. The sheer act of getting into a rooftop vent offers you so many choices of getting there. Sure, you could use the upgrade to propel your bug up there. Or you might control a dad unit, deserialize a robot you want to put up there and print them up there. Or you might have a pup, which you could just chuck up into the vent. Or you might use the download ability to put a pup up there or put a bug up there, replacing your current bug. I was a big fan of making use of pups. Scout out the area, collect ego along the way, summon containers, summon various objects I could transmit to. Maybe take control of various robots along the way. I could do so in peace if I kept my distance from hostiles. I also love to make use of bug traps. With the download program, I could make one at will with enough juice or find one out in the environment. You can control them to arm or disarm them, or set off an arm trap. If I could get my bug close enough, I would download a bug next to my target. Else, I would use a pup to push it toward the destination to set it off. Of course, you could also use fault on one and chuck it for even more damage. Attention, CRS employees. And there were times where I progressed through level with little use of robots and just transmit from device to device. As long as it's in sight, you could transmit to another object. Some objects will give you ego for transmitting to. Use that ego to unlock doors, switch your view to the other side of the door, and continue on. Continue doing this until you find a printer or a robot to control like a pup past all the obstacles you bypassed with this approach. Now there are limits to transmitting around. Some objects you need to be in sight of. Others, once under your control, you could transmit back to whenever you want, no matter the distance. That being any robots you control or printers. There's a filter that's easy to show what specific objects you could transmit to, like a printer or the dads you control. As you're transmitting around so often, does it get tiresome? No, it's a quick process and you could speed it up. There's a welcome setting where you could skip the warp animation if you find yourself having motion sickness. With all these interacting systems and possible approaches, the game needs strong level design to reach its potential, and Control Alt Ego pulls it off. It blows my mind that this is just only a couple of developers here. Any major section or room can be tackled in a number of different ways. Use your ego to take over security doors and robots. Use your bugs programs to deal with roadblocks. If you just want to transmit object to object, you can as well. Want to go for runs where you don't destroy any robots? You can. That's something I didn't indulge in myself. I had too much fun throwing faulted objects at robots. The game offers a challenge mode where you'll revisit levels with different constraints, getting you to look at the level in a different way. A great incentive for further replayability in a game full of it. And the game eases you into everything. There is a bit of a learning curve to control all ego. It takes a bit of time to get accustomed to its rule set. I didn't think about it too much at first, but the early chapters are more linear, with smaller hallways and less verticality. The other kinds of robot types, like the dad, the mom, and others get introduced one by one, before mixing and matching with others. You're building up to an encounter 
that feels like the end of the game may be approaching, but there's still plenty left to go. The main campaign took me about 15 or so hours. And after this encounter, that's where the game really begins to open up. You have a wide variety of areas you could go into with whatever order you want. You know how common it is for games to put their best foot forward and stumble in quality as it goes on? Control Alt Ego doesn't suffer from it. Instead, it takes a huge leap in challenging you with more open-ended levels with plenty of verticality where it really begins to push you. More enemies and the ego required to take over objects increases. And it caps it off with a large area in which you have access to float around in space outside a space station. This offers you even more options and hurdles to overcome. Some of my favorite moments in the game was when I'd fly onto space, use the windows to transmit into the station, and transmit point to point to reach my objective, bypassing all the hostile robots along the way. It's crazy to go back to earlier levels after and realize how much not only has the game changed, but how your abilities have changed. What seems like difficult challenges back then were now cakewalks of what the game throws at you later. That's not to say the end stretch keeps everything super open. There are some later game sections and more constrained areas but with far more hurdles to overcome. Although overall, I did prefer the more open-ended levels. The plot of Control All Ego is very much one that stays out of your way. If you want to go ahead and just complete these levels, you can. Seeking out and reading the notes on iPads and computer terminals not only give you ego, but insight into the story. The game takes an offbeat, quirky approach. They pull from that low-budget British sci-fi feel from years past. There's Dr. Everyman who will give us instructions and insights into what's going on through various cat terminals, but you have to go seek them out. He's not with you, commenting about everything. He has that quirky British humor about him. His bits are kept short and sweet. If this were like a modern large budget title, he'd be with you at all times and wouldn't stop talking. Here he comes across as welcoming and enjoyable without overstaying his welcome. Where are all the people? Why is it just robots? Well, the further you get in, the more you'll learn about what happened to mankind, about disembodied egos, and about human consciousness. Who you are as an ego and who Dr. Every Man is. It's a fun little story with the British quirk and charm with some dark undertones about human consciousness, and it never gets in your way or takes control away from you. There is more instruction and frequency of Dr. Everyman early on, but that's the game getting used to its rule set. Something that does take some time to get accustomed to, but once you do, you're off to the races. And that end result is one of the best titles I've played in recent years. It's an incredible achievement of immersive sim design with just a couple of developers. Control Alt Ego is something I wish I checked out sooner. It should have received recognition as a contender for Game of the Year for 2022. But these games do have long shelf lives, so I do hope those who dig the immersive sim style check it out. It's set a very high bar for upcoming immersive sims to reach. I hope I've done a good job of convincing you to check it out and explaining how it works. It is a bit tricky to explain the rule set, and it does take a bit of time to get used to it. But once you do, it's one of the best experiences I've had with a new game in recent memory. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel further, please consider checking out my Patreon. If you haven't done all that stuff the YouTube algorithm likes, like, comment, subscribe, do that as well if you'd like. Thanks everyone. Boulder Punch out. It's a puzzle boss. There's no, ch it's not challenging. It's a garbage puzzle. You don't know what to do. I'm exposing a tweet point. Unloading all my ammo into it is not dying. I don't care. Not until someone tells me what to do. I'm not going to play anymore.